In this tutorial, we're going to take a look at keyframes and adding keyframe actions to animation in Butterfly Inchworm Animation 2 for Nintendo 3DS. As you can see, I already have a movie playing. This animation consists of two layers. One layer control, uh, contains the numbers 0 through 49, drawn in black. The other layer contains all the letters of the alphabet drawn in white. If I open the timeline, you can see these two layers. Now, the default action of Butterfly is to play all the cells of a layer over and over in a loop at 30 frames a second. And that's what you see happening here. Now that can be nice, but sometimes you want to change that behavior. And we're going to take a look at that with this tutorial. We'll start with the letters. I'm going to go back to frame 0, and I'm going to hit this plus button and say add keyframe. Now here you see the keyframe action screen. It lets you choose from five different types of keyframes and then on the right you see settings for each particular type. So we're going to start with a play keyframe and basically this just tells the layer to play its cells starting at one particular drawing at one particular rate. So we're going to say start at cell 0 but play at five frames a second and this gives you a preview of how that looks. So I'll say OK, and then now that's become part of our animation. The letters are changing at 5 frames a second, while the numbers on a different layer are still at 30 frames a second. Next, let's try something else with the letters layer. If we scroll out to frame 73, for example, or 74, we're at the letter M. What we want to do is have this animation fade up from 0 from absolutely transparent to fully opaque at frame 74. So what we want to do is go back to our original keyframe and we're going to replace that. We're still going to have start at cell 0 at rate 5, but we're going to change the opacity here to 0. That makes the layer absolutely transparent. Now if I were to leave it that way, you just never would see that layer. But what we're going to do is go back to frame 74. I can change the scale of the timeline to make it easier to select an exact frame. Go back to 74, add a keyframe, and then we're going to use this uh, opacity and raise that up to 1. So now, between these two keyframes at 0 and frame 74, the layer is slowly going to fade in. Now let's look at what we can do to the numbers layer. I'll go back to frame 0. I'm going to add a keyframe. And let's start off by, hmm, I could say hide. Hide is a keyframe that just tells it not to show it at all. Um, it's kind of like, you could also just set the opacity to 0. Um, instead, let's do hold. We looked at hold in one of the other tutorials. Hold lets you just stick on one particular drawing until you set another keyframe. So, I don't know, let's hold frame 30. So now, instead of starting at 0 and counting up, our first layer just holds on frame 30. Alright, let's go back and add a second keyframe. We'll go to frame 44, 45, good enough. And now let's add a new keyframe, where instead of holding, we're going to loop. Now loop lets you select a subset of drawings and create a little loop from them. So for example, now let's go to frame 10, cell 10, in other words, and we're going to loop for four frames. And we're going to do that at two frames a second. Okay, so now if we play the animation, at first it holds on frame 30, and then we have our loop, 10, 11, 12, 13, 10, 11, 12, 13. 10, 11, 12, 13, at 2 frames a second. Now, you wouldn't ever really want to make an animation like this, but you can see how some of these techniques would be useful if you wanted to make a looping animation of rain, for example, or you wanted to fade in on a title, and that, this is where uh, keyframe actions really become useful. Uh, lastly, we'll add one more keyframe to the numbers layer, and this will we'll use the pattern. There are three types of pattern. One uses a sort of stutter where it like advances a little ways and then goes back. 
Um, not really useful for the numbers, but if you have some fluid animation, it can look kind of cool, create some cool effects. Uh, we have backwards. This is uh, will actually just play the uh, the drawings backwards. So you know I can start at frame 49 and go all the way back to zero. And then the third one is random. It'll just play absolutely random numbers. So let's use backwards. We'll start at frame 20 and count down at a rate of three frames a second. So we'll play the animation, holds at frame 30, then we have our four frame loop. Just briefly, that's really too brief to see. I'm going to move this keyframe out a little bit so that it lasts for longer. Now let's take a look at it. Holds at frame 30, there's our four frame loop, and then here's our countdown from 20 back down to zero. So that's a brief introduction to keyframes and keyframe actions in Butterfly Inchworm Animation 2.